Hey all, so this is my new project, Sec Live, and it's very similar looking and feel to my last one, Sec, <coughs> but the functionality is very different. So the first part of this video, I'll explain what's different and what it does, and then I'll kind of just go into a walkthrough a little bit. So just watch the beginning if you want to just get a feel. So basically, Sec Live allows you to run up to eight sequences, and they're displayed here. <coughs> and then down here is kind of a workspace for each of those sequences. So you switch through them and they appear down here and then you can kind of edit them. As you can see I'm editing here and it appears up here. <coughs> so I'll just show you, I'll run the sequence. And right now these four sequences are running. So you can see the playhead running through each of them. And so what actually each of these are, are uh, a group of things. So each one of these have a, two sequencers and a fader sending out data <coughs> to make a MIDI note. So you have the pink, each one has a pink sequencer, and then up here you switch to the blue sequencer. So they send them, each group sends the pink and blue out simultaneously, and each one has a fader down here. <coughs> so each one individually you can decide what the pink the blue sequencer send out and the fader send out and that's managed down here so you open this little button here and then you can choose the pitch sends out right now through the fader the velocity is sending out through the blue sequencer and the length is sending out through the pink sequencer and you can change that around so you can have a static note being sent out or you can have a sequenced pitch being sent out <coughs> Right, and uh, up here all these sequences are kind of managed by these buttons up here at the very top. And uh, I'll start here on the left. So these buttons, they're all, they're all pads, but you can lock them down with this little O here. So if I press the O, it remains on. <coughs> I'll turn it off. So the first one's mute, and that distinguishes if a sequence is running or not. So, so I mute all of them. And then... I add them back in. So yeah, you hold down mute or lock it in and you can just touch the sequences to turn them on and off. Uh, next is solo. Much like mute, except it just solos one, <laughs> as you're used to. And then the la third one is repeat. And repeat, you can choose the rate it repeats at and then you touch a, s a sequence and it repeats it. and it turns yellow. Yeah, so for kind of like quick repeating of notes for like a fill or whatever. And then uh, I'll get to these buttons here later, but if you're using them, they're for re-triggering the sequence, storing the sequence into the storage, which is down there, and then clearing them. <clears throat> I'll, I'll go into a little more detail on how to do that later if you're interested. Right, getting into the new things about this are there's a swing. Uh, you can swing the rhythm. I stole it from the uh, Max for Live mono sequencer swing. <coughs> so you can swing at the 16th note, the 8th note, and the 32nd note. Uh, I don't have swing for any of the other notes. So if you're at 16th note, you'll see the swing up here. You hold it down, and then you can choose how much you want it to swing, or you can turn it off. And then also I added here is, uh, since this is used for instruments too and not just drum racks, um, there's a, a scale mode here so you can choose the scale you want <coughs> the the tonic the accidental major or minor and then you turn it on here so you can have chromatic or diatonic and then you click range here and you can select a range of the octave and all you can do the full range or just a small part <coughs> yeah and then um, besides those everything else is very similar to my last one you know you have steps direction uh, synchronized intervals. Uh, you have the same canvas loop uh, range, so you click loop here and you select a range that you want to be played. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the main differences. Now I'll do kind of more of a walkthrough if you're really interested. And, um, and yeah, I'll start with how you set it up. Oh, one more important thing is the eighth sequence, this one right here, that one you can send as a MIDI note, or you can map 
uh, the blue and pink sequencer two parameters for just that eighth sequencer. So if I throw on a filter, I'll click map right here, click the frequency, and now the blue sequencer can send to there. And you switch between the mode right here. So here's the eighth sequencer, sequence eight mode. And right now it's sending out as notes, but if you click to map, then it will send out the sequences to these parameters here. And then you can, you know, do a range of it and all. Right. Okay. So the first thing I'll do for my walkthrough kind of is show you how to set up just in case you don't have, know how to set up an OSC target. <clears throat> Very simple setting this up. So you go to your settings, more settings. You go down to the OSC targets. Do OSC zero. That's what all my stuff's sending out through. You go to the port here. You type in a port. Right now I'm at 5,000. And then here you can either type in your IP, I'm pretty sure, or you, if you're on a Mac, or I don't know how you do it on PC, but you go to your sharing and you can get your computer local name. So that's what I'm sending through. It's easier to remember. Um, right, and then you go on the Max patch and you type in your iPad IP here. Uh, you'll always have to retype it if you reload it. <coughs> and, then, um, and then just click off, don't press enter. And then here you click that same port number that you made the OSC target for. So I made it for 5,000, so I'm clicking 5,000. All right. <clears throat> so now it's all set up. Um, now if you move stuff on the lemur, this little white LED should shine up. See, I'm moving stuff. All right. Um, now it's set up. Um, so like I said, you have these eight sequences here. And... Uh, the, I'll go through these buttons a little more. Or first I'll do the preset system. So you have a storage system and it's kind of like you can dump a sequence you made up here to down here and then later you can choose a sequence from here and throw it up here. And it's not just the sequence, it's all the rate data, all the sending data, it's everything. <clears throat> so, um, so you can really just kind of go back and forth between your rhythms. Um, obviously, for both of these, the clear button, if you hold them down and then press a sequence, it's gone. You'll clear it. See? Boom. Gone. All right. And then this button here is very important, actually. Very important. The sync button. So when you first... I have this thing to where w when you move through these, it blocks the data from being resent, uh, so you don't get unexpected noises. But when you first open the patch and get everything connected, so you get everything connected, then hold down this sync button right here, and you hold it down, and then you just click. I would click through all of them. And that will send all the data to max patch and get them in sync. So again, hold down sync, go through these. That will get you in sync. <clears throat> and you might have to click the, the multi-sliders too. Um, OK, so here's how you, the preset system works. So you, you click one of or you just hold down store up here in the middle and then you click whichever one you want. I'm gonna click this guy right here. So I click him, he turns white. And then he's active. So then I just choose any space down here. I'm gonna go right here and press there and boom. There he is right there. There you go. And then I'll clear him. Ha, huh, bye. All right. And then um or actually I'm gonna put him back. <laughs> so there he is down here. And then to load these to here, all you do is click one of them so I click this guy and it says two it's the second one and then I click him and then there that's how you do it so you just click here click there and click here click there pretty easy um, let's see and then yeah you can clear the sequences up here by holding down clear and then like I said this blue but this button here switches between your view of the blue and pink sequencers um, and yeah, just in case you didn't notice, this is the button that takes you to the preset system. Right. Um, also, you got a little monitor here for the pitch you're on. So if pitch is here, when you move this, it'll move. If pitch is on, like right now, pitch is on the pink sequencer. So now when I touch the pink sequencer, this monitor will show up. So it just depends which one you're on. Um, and uh, oh yeah, shape. So if you didn't see the last one, you know, this shapes, when you click the shape button, it gives you this little menu of stuff you can do. So 
Um, so you can invert it with this button, and you can randomize with this button, and you can copy paste with these, <coughs> and you can go up and down with this, left, right with this. Right. Um, and then if you didn't see the last one, you know, you have direction, backward, forward, random, four back. <coughs> um, and then change your step here. And actually, if you hold down the step, the looper will come up too. So for kind of a quick way of changing your loop as you change your steps. Otherwise, you press this loop button here. And then instead of, you know, touching the multi-sliders, you touch the range looper. The range of the loop. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's pretty much it, you know. Um, oh, okay, yeah, a big the retrigger button. <clears throat> so right here, retrigger mode. So if retrigger mode is on free, well, first let me explain the retrigger button. So you hold if you when you change rate or if you load something or some other stuff, you might get off beat. <clears throat> so what you'll do is you'll hold the retrigger button and then you'll click the desired sequencer. So as you hold it, just like everything else, you click the sequencer. And then it will it will kind of uh, send it back to the one <coughs> or wherever the start of your loop is. Now, if it's on free, as soon as you click the sequence, it will restart it. If it's on sync mode, then on the next quarter note, it will resync it. So <coughs> you'll probably end up using sync the sync mode, unless you're doing you know something more abstract. Okay, yeah, and, and that's pretty much it. You know, you throw it on a drum rack. Uh, that's more what it's built for, but actually with my scale mode and all, you can definitely throw it on an instrument and, uh, you know, and, uh, and you can get like a layered sequence with notes. <coughs> um, yeah, and then, you know, uh, just like my last project, it's really great to use this um, in tandem with... Uh, it's really great to use this in tandem with uh, MIDI, empty MIDI track, receiving the MIDI data, because, you know, once you got a rhythm, you want to record it, you know, and it all shows up here. And then boom, it's down. And you can even throw it on here. Stop what you were doing. So I stopped everything and you know, now it's just playing straight from this. <clears throat> and then you're free to make it even more layered, you know. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. Uh, let me think for one second. Okay, yeah, I think that's it. So, you know, have fun, enjoy. Um, I might put out another version, another sec um, thing, but you know, I, I like this one a lot better than the other one I've been working on, so I might not release it. <coughs> uh, I'll see how I feel. All right. Thank you.